Hey gang, Troy here, and I've been getting a lot of questions recently about my live streaming setup. So sit back, make yourself a, a nice cup of tea or get some popcorn or whatever it is you do and get ready because I'm about to give you a complete studio tour on all the gear I use to go live. I will say this, you don't need all this gear to go live. I'm gonna tell you what I think you should do just to get started. Um, you don't need all this gear to go live, so please don't be overwhelmed by everything we're about to show you. This I'm making this video to inspire you and show you what is possible. Um, everything we talk about is gonna be listed at kit.co slash Troy Dean. Just follow the link to Troy's live streaming kit and uh, can't wait to hear your comments. All right, let's get into it. It all starts with my computer. A couple of years ago, I was live streaming from a MacBook Pro, uh, top of the range, and the fan was spinning 100 miles an hour, and I, I see this come up in the live stream communities all the time. So I made a decision a couple of years ago just to go all in and buy, at, the, at that time was the uh, best, most pimped out iMac Pro. It was about 12 grand, I think, Australian. It was a stupid amount of money to spend on a computer. However, I can do I can just throw whatever I want at this computer. I can live stream, I can be editing, I can be listening to podcasts, I can be dancing with a tutu on my head at the same time, and it just never misses a beat, apart from the tutu thing. Uh, so it all starts with the iMac Pro. Now, you don't need the iMac Pro because it is a very expensive computer. Um, if you're just starting out, I would suggest getting one of the new MacBook Airs with the M1 chip or a basic MacBook Pro with the M1 chip because you, you'll be able to live stream on that thing without the fan spinning. I've seen so many live streams and I can hear the fan spinning in the background. It's very distracting. So make sure you've got good a good processor to capture everything you're doing and broadcast it out. The problem with most modern computers is that you have a limited number of ports and I want to plug everything into my computer to try and capture whatever I can. So what I do to extend the port uh, input array on my iMac is I use the Thunderbolt docks from OWC. I use the Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 3 dock from OWC, which expands my ports and allows me to basically plug everything in. So let's talk about what is plugged in to the computer. First things first is you wanna make sure you've got good camera and good lens. I am looking down the barrel now of a Sigma 16mm 1.4 lens. It's a prime lens and it is strapped onto a, well, it's actually connected correctly, not strapped with an Oki strap and some gaffer tape. It is, uh, everything else in the office is, but this is actually connected properly to a Sony A6400 camera. And that is what is capturing this beautiful image, if I do say so myself, and gets the beautiful soft uh, shallow depth of field, uh, soft focus in the background, which I'll talk more about in a moment. So I've got one of those. Um, now, if you were just using one of those, you would just plug it straight into your computer using something like the Cam Link from Elgato, uh, or Sony have now released software which allow and now enable you to just plug it in via a, a, an HDMI to USB cable, and it will see it as a USB camera. I still prefer the Cam Link. Um, I think it gives better quality than the straight out uh, USB output of the camera. However, because I have two of these bad boys, there is number two sitting directly above my iMac so that when I'm on Zoom calls and um, uh, if I'm doing something more instructional, I can just be directly above the screen here because I have two of them and I wanted to plug two cam links into my computer. The cam links are pretty chunky, you run out of space, and also you're putting a lot of processing power on the computer. Even though I have a great computer, I wanted to try and offboard some of that processing power, and I wanted to, uh, and also financially, it just made more sense to buy an Atom Mini, which is what allows me to switch between multiple cameras and look at the right camera at the right time and you wanna make sure that you're always looking at the right camera at the right time as you switch. It's basically got four HDMI inputs, a bunch of audio inputs, and a bunch of really cool transitions that I can use at the moment. I've just got it on cut, uh, but I could um, make it uh, dissolve like this. Oh, hang on, that didn't work. Why didn't that one work? Well, that's just a straight cut. I could do something like, um, how, about, how about this? Uh, I just like to leave it on cut because I think the transitions are a bit daggy, but that's just my personal opinion. So the Atom Mini allows you to plug up to four cameras into that thing, and then that just runs directly into your 
which camera are we looking at? Uh, that just runs directly into your computer via one USB-C cable. So one port into the computer, I can have up to four cameras plugged in. What it does mean though, is that the computer only sees it as one camera. So any switching needs to happen on the actual hardware. And so you need to make sure that you're looking at the right camera when you switch so that you don't get yourself a little bit confused. Right, um, whereas if you had multiple cameras plugged into the computer, then you could use software on the computer to do the switching, but that's a whole other conversation. Now that we've talked about cameras, let's talk about the most important thing, which is the product I use in my hair and on my face. No, sorry, it's the sound, because there's no point having great vision if people can't hear you. I will tell you this, people will forgive poor quality vision People are quite happy to look up your nostrils if you're just live streaming from your phone, as long as they can hear what you're saying. If people can't hear what you're saying, so you don't need all the fancy stuff I've got because I'm just addicted to buying gear. Uh, if you're just starting out, I would get something like the um, AT2020, which is a great little microphone, sits on a tripod on the desk. In fact, my wife produced over 50 episodes of her podcast with that microphone and it sounded great. What I have these days is the Rode Broadcaster microphone is the great big radio quality microphone that I use for podcasting. This actually also has an extension on it, which is made by Shure, I believe, S-H-U-R-E, this Shure extender, which basically means that I can have less of this in shot and I can get this microphone closer to my mouth. I'm just gonna bring this microphone up here and now you should be hearing this microphone here instead of the room mic, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, this is a beautiful microphone. It's an end address microphone, which basically means you need to talk directly into the end of it. If you put it here or you put it away from you or you hang it overhead or you put it on the table away from you, it's not gonna sound very good. It's designed for you to talk directly into it. And as much as it is a beautiful sounding microphone, I would use this for podcasting and producing beautiful sounding audio, but I don't like using it for live streaming because I've got all this infrastructure in the way and I'm trying to type on the keyboard and I'm trying to see the screen and it's just a little bit clunky. So back to the room mic, I'm just gonna get that out of the way now. And that by the way is on a Rode PSA1 boom arm, which allow it's strapped to my desk not with gaff tape, but actually screwed in properly to my desk and uh, is a boom arm, so it's out of the way when I'm not using it. The microphone I'm actually using though is a Rode NTG5 and it sits right here. Here we go. Tap, tap, tap. You can hear that? Can you hear that? Yes. So it just sits out of view. It sits above me, kind of pointing down at my head. Again, I, I used to have it lower on the desk pointing up, but it, it was just kind of getting in the way. So I, I can now see my entire uh, workstation here, all the cameras and everything without having any infrastructure in my way. And this is a boom mic. It's a shotgun mic by Rode. It's called the NTG5. Uh, and it's a thing of beauty. And I'll show you how that's all strapped together in a moment. Um, it's basically strapped to my desk using a bunch of Elgato magic mounts and flex arm kits, which I'll explain in a moment. By the way, if this is all a little bit confusing or overwhelming, uh, you can just go check out kit.co slash Troy Dean. I'll put a link near this video and check out my live streaming kit and all the stuff that I use is in there. And of course, it all links through to Amazon. And of course, if you buy anything from any of those links, I will earn a filthy affiliate commission, which I will then use to continue to buy really expensive coffee beans for my coffee machine that I have over in the office. So that's where my affiliate commission's going. Don't worry, it's not putting my kids through school. Uh, so that is from an audio point of view, uh, that's what I'm using from the microphones. Now, the question is, how am I capturing that audio and getting it into the computer? Well, I'm glad you asked. All the microphones get plugged into the Rodecaster, which is the, it's basically like a multi-track mixing desk for podcasters, and it's a thing of beauty and has these colored pads here that you can uh, put sound effects on, so you can have the intro and outro to your podcast, your sponsor messages and funny sound effects and all that kind of good stuff there. I can then record directly on the Rodecaster Pro. If I'm just recording a podcast, then I just have the audio. Uh, then it just records to an SD card 
uh, which I can then take anywhere, or it pl also plugs into the computer via a USB cable so I can just take the recordings off the Rodecaster Pro, put them straight into Logic and edit a podcast directly here. It's just a thing of absolute beauty. The other thing you can do is you can connect your your telephone, that's right, this thing that is a calculator and a camera that you can make phone calls on, you can connect that to the Rodecaster Pro via the old Bluetooth settings on your phone. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna fire up uh, Spotify and play some of my favorite funk music, Inspiration Information by Shuggy Otis. So what that means is that if you're doing a podcast, you can actually have people call you on the phone and stream them directly into your show and answer their questions. Of course, I wouldn't suggest you giving your cell number out to random strangers. You probably want to have like a 1300 call in number or a 1800 call in number that redirects to your phone. I know it's very complicated. Um, stay with me. Now, while I'm live streaming, also, um, what have we talked about? We've talked about cameras, we've talked about microphones, we'll talk about the lights in a moment, and we'll talk about these lights in a moment. Uh, but what I want to do right now is I just want to stand up. And so I just want to show that this whole thing is connected to my stand-up desk, and I will try and stand up at the same pace as the desk so you don't lose my head. And uh, it means that I can perform and coach and go live and do whatever I need to do whilst standing. If I just get that chair out of the way, out of shot like that, now I'm standing up. So I have complete freedom to move. Um, there's only one thing that I need to, um, only one thing that keeps me connected to my desk, and this is the next problem I'm going to fix, and that is these uh, in-ear monitors that I use while I'm live streaming. I'll just put them on right now. These are the MEE -E Audio. MEE -E Audio. These are actually the M6 Pros, I believe. They sound amazing and they just connect in like this, right? So they go over the ear, they go in the ear like that, and now I can hear myself in full high fidelity and um, they're barely visible. Now, when I don't have any hair on the side of my head, so uh, you can kind of see them, but if you have a little bit of hair or a little bit of a beard, I wish I could grow one, uh, but I can't, then you would basically wouldn't be able to see them at all. Um, and so if we just bring up a bit of um, Shuggy Otis again. Oh, loving it. Loving the funk music. So these things are wired into the Rodecaster Pro. There's a headphone output in the back of the Rodecaster Pro. In fact, there's four because it's designed to actually record podcast episodes. I've got an extension cable running under my uh, stand-up desk, and then I just have this extension cable plugged in to the ME Audio uh, in-ear monitors. There we go. You can see it right there. If I unplug that, I can't hear myself here. If I plug it back in, like magic, the audio transmits and I can hear myself. Um, that just usually sits on a hook, uh, which is on my sit-down stand-up desk, which also has my Audio-Technica headphones on it, which are the headphones I use when I'm listening to something that I want to sound, uh, you know, incredible, like some snarky puppy or, you know, the sound of my own voice on a podcast episode or something. That's what these look like, the Audio-Technica headphones. Got a little bit of feedback there. That was weird. These are the Audio-Technica headphones there. Um, I frankly don't use them much these days because when I put them on my head, it messes my hair up. So I tend to just use these. And also it keeps that infrastructure out of the shot and it just means that we're nice and open to engage with the audience. So we've talked about cameras, we've talked about microphones, we've talked about the Rodecaster, we've talked about the Atom Mini for switching cameras, we've talked about the in-ear monitors. Let's talk about lights. Uh, and in fact, let's just turn some lights off here and um, let's go dark, okay? So here we go, uh, the front lights are now off and I'm also going to turn my back lights off and there we go. All that's on now, in fact, there are no lights on in this room. I tell a lie, there are four little down lights on in this room up the front of the office where the other guys sit. Uh, there are no lights here from my desk back, there are no lights. 
So let's talk about, first of all, uh, what is lighting me? I have three Elgato key lights. I have one here strapped to my stand-up desk on an Elgato magic mount, and that is facing me at a 45 degree angle, and it looks like that. So it just lights this side of my face. Um, that is really a fill light because it's just filling in a little bit of uh, this space here. My key light, I think, which is my brighter light, is actually over here. That's the wrong temperature too, that color, that um, light I've just noticed. This one here is brighter, believe it or not, and it is warmer. This one over here is uh, currently on daylight um, color temperature, which is basically a cool white. This is on uh, tungsten, which is a warm white. This is actually the wrong color, this one over here. And I have had a problem with this light uh, that if I have it set to, uh, basically it's it's backwards. So I think I've got it set to, um, to daylight, but it's not, it's tungsten. And so in the software, I have to switch it around. It's a known problem with that particular light. And I'm talking to Elgato at the moment about getting a replacement. So those two key lights now are on me. Uh, this one is a little bit brighter, I think. Um, that one is there, there. I mean, they're basically, they're very similar. And then I've got this hair light above me because my hair is fabulous. I have this hair light above me, which just lights my hair a little bit here and my shoulders and also puts a little bit of light on the desk. And you'll see that just that little bit of light on the, the beautiful acacia wood here on the top of my sit stand desk. Now, the truth is when I'm not live streaming, I leave that light on. So I work like this because I like that light there. I also have a little lamp just a little desk lamp here on an arm, which uh, kind of lights up the beautiful warm tones of this desk. And this is how I work. When I, when I go live, I just put those two lights on so you can see my face. Now let's talk about what's behind me because this really here is the Pista Resistance. And I must give a huge shout out to my friend Marshall Fox in the Ecamm live community who inspired me to do this. Uh, basically, I've pimped out the background here behind me with a bunch of Philips Hue lights. There's a whole bunch going on. There are, there are LED strips behind this buffet. That blue light just at the top of that buffet there, uh, on the back of that buffet, is an LED uh, strip. All of these table lights here actually have uh, smart lamps in them, as does the floor lamp. That has a smart lamp in it. So does the vintage lamp there. It's got a smart lamp in it and does that floor lamp here. That also has a vintage lamp in it as well. I also then have round, what's called a Philips Hue Go, G-O, which is a, a round light, which is actually portable. It's got a three hour battery in it. I've got them plugged in. That's giving me that blue light there and also giving me this blue light here. And behind the posters, I've got a poster of the Reservoir Dogs film there and I've got our emblem logo here, the plane. Behind there, I've got a little red bar, a little bar called the Philips Hue bar, and they are colored red. But here's the thing with the Philips Hue lights, which I absolutely love, is you can change the color of them. So I can just go to what I call the office, which is this scene that I've got set up here on the app. It all runs off the Philips Hue app off your phone. I can have that set up uh, to the office, and then I can just go to my color selections, and there's a whole bunch of different, uh, so the scene is called the office, and then these are themes for the scene. So I can say, hey, let's have a Savannah sunset, and I just change the color with the push of a button there. Uh, let's have a tropical twilight, and it goes like that. Or let's have Oscar's favorite, spring blossom. Ooh. Uh, then we can concentrate, very bright, or we can do some, uh, we can do some reading, Mm, not bad. Or we can go dimmed. Oh, there we go. Or we can relax. Lovely. Uh, and then I have a, a theme here called working. So the scene is called the office. Sorry, the room is called the office. And the scene is called working. And this is my working scene. And the room is called the office. I can then set up multiple rooms in this building or at home and have different scenes for each room. It really is a thing of beauty and it's something that I discovered during lockdown uh, in 2020 where I was working from home and had a pretty dull background and wanted to make it look pretty sexy. So we've talked about <clears throat> front lights, we've talked about rear lights, we've talked about audio, camera, all that kind of good stuff. The only thing we really haven't talked about is how the hell is this all hanging off my sit stand up desk? Because there are no tripods on the ground at all and everything is strapped onto this desk using the Elgato 
Uh, first of all, the monitors, the, let, let me just talk about my computer for a sec. I've got an iMac Pro here and I've got an LG 4K ultra fine monitor here. It's just a small one. It's the, the 22 inch, I think it is, or the 23 inch. It's not the big one because I didn't need that much. I don't want to take up too much space on my desk. They are strapped onto the desk using at deck monitor arms. Um, so there's that they, they're not on stands, they're on arms to keep the desk clear. And then everything else is strapped onto the desk using the Elgato Magic Mount and Flex Arm kits. So therefore, there are no tripods on the floor anywhere. The cameras, the lights, this microphone, my overhead microphone, the Logitech, which I'll show you in a moment, which is the only thing I haven't talked about, they are all strapped onto the desk using the Magic Mount and Elgato Flex Arm kits from Elgato. They are freaking amazing. I love this stuff. It is so solid. I've had Manfrotto magic arms on this desk before and stuff wobbles around left, right and center. This is as solid as a rock. So the only thing I haven't talked about is this camera here and what it does and what we use it for. And so I like to draw on my iPad a lot. I use the Notability app and an Apple Pencil to draw on uh, the iPad. And so what we do as a little gimmick every now and then is we show people here is the overhead, yay. Now that is the Logitech Brio, and I've just got that mounted on the Elgato arm um, so that it shoots down onto the iPad so I can come in here and draw on the iPad and say, well, we're going to uh, increase our influence and grow our authority and we're gonna invest $3 million in Bitcoin and ha 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 ha. And then of course I just switch to the iPad as a source in Ecamm to zoom in and so to show the screen uh, full screen, but I also like to show people that it is actually an iPad on my desk and I'm drawing on it. Right, so kids, wow. Well, I think I've covered just about everything. Um, that is um, cameras, sound, lights, roadcasters. Oh, the speakers I've got on my desk here are uh, little Mackie powered speakers. They're very small. I don't even know what model they are, but they're just little Mackie powered speakers. They're sitting on some audio engine feet to angle them up towards me. And they're actually powered by an audio engine uh, USB audio interface, which sits under my desk here. It's actually strapped under my desk in a little bracket. So I can crank those speakers up when I'm listening to the old snarky puppy. So these speakers are great. I like uh, rocking out to my tunes while I'm working. And I think that covers everything, ladies and gentlemen. That is basically a tour of the studio here and how I work. I hope you found this helpful. As I said, you can learn more about the gear and check out everything over at kit.co slash Troy Dean and just go to my live streaming kit and get links to all the gear there. And as I said, if you do buy any of this stuff, um, then I will get an affiliate commission. The other thing I just picked up the other day was, of course, the AirPods Pro. Um, I love these things, they're amazing. I use these for Zoom calls. So if I'm just doing Zoom calls with the team, I stick these in. I don't worry about the fancy microphones and everything, um, but I do use this camera for Zoom calls. So if we ever have a Zoom call one day, you'll probably be looking at me like this with my AirPods Pro in. All right, hope you found that helpful. Uh, keep on live streaming and please remember this, you don't need all this shit to go live. What you need, and, and the problem I have is I have all this gear, but I don't really have anything interesting to say. So I'm gonna work on that next. What you need is a great message. You need conviction and passion in what it is you're doing. You don't need all this fancy stuff. I've spent the last 12 years collecting this and building this. And again, just wanted to say a huge shout out to my friends, David Blackman, uh, Marshall, um, uh, Marshall Fox and all the guys in the Ecamm live community. You guys continue to inspire me to keep going and improving and I thank you for everything you're doing. So keep live streaming, keep going, keep on punching and uh, keep on making an impact. Bye for now.